What did I just read? Welcome, everybody, to What Did I Just Read? I'm Holly. And I'm LA. And we are covering Funny Story by Emily Henry. Woo! Yay! Now, Emily, this is Emily Henry's fourth adult romance book. Mm-hmm. She's written YA books, and yeah. I read one of them. I don't like, I didn't like it at all. Don't come for me. But <laughs> yeah, she's done, or maybe it's, uh, it's people five. need advocate. Is it five? five. Yeah, because we have B3, people we meet on vacation, book lovers, happy place, and funny story. Can I tell you, I block out Beach Read from my mind. I and it's everybody's love favorite. Beach Read. Oh, I know. Such I strong know. emotions. That rival, <laughs> honestly, happy place to me. No? Happy place. Happy place, I thought was my number. No, no. People we meet on vacation is my number one. And that's Ugh. people's least favorite. Yeah, it's I know. my least favorite. Yeah. No, no, it's my favorite. I mean, I can definitely relate to the lead in that book because she's running away from her small town. I was like, yep, same. Goodbye. Peace out. You know, (laughs) but then she like goes back and I was like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. (laughs) (laughs) So immediately number five, last place for me. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, so this will be interesting then because we have polar experiences with like our favorites and what we like, but we both enjoy Emily Henry, right? We do. Well, do you? Because I feel like before Happy Place, you were on the fence with Emily Henry. True. And then Happy Place brought me back on. Okay. Uh, Funny story. (sighs) Me. Yeah, funny story. I liked it, but I'm I'm not like Mer. in love what? with it. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Um, same. I you know I was really loving it, and there were definitely points in the beginning where I had this feeling like this is going to be my new favorite Emily Henry book. I was really enjoying it. The pacing was good until it got slow in the middle, and it just kept dragging. And little things yep. kept happening and then people kept showing up. And I was just, yes, I was kind of like, okay, let's move along. I knew what Emily Henry was doing because I think Emily Henry's big thing is completing circles, wrapping yep. little bows on her character's traumas and making them better <laughs> or at least maybe not better, but getting over something or tackling a personal issue or starting the process of closure yeah and she did that several times in this book for several of the characters and it it was just a lot and maybe I think a lot of it unnecessary yeah it felt like a little bit of filler in this one like it just yeah, it started out with such a bang. I loved the whole setup and the premise of this. Oh, I thought it so was so good. Yeah. Fantastic. I loved their story and how they were getting more involved with each other and how she kind of, you had the timeline as well, which I was just, you know, kind of eager about what was going to happen. I loved that she was a librarian. I love. I thought it was fantastic. But yeah, towards the end, it was just kind of like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, I didn't feel like it was a secret where the story was going yep I felt like I knew what was going to happen at the end I felt like I knew that the ex was going to circle back to her and she was going to be like no I'm in love with this guy now or I couldn't possibly get back together with you because of what you did to me you know and then getting back with what's his face so I felt like I yeah Miles Peter yeah Peter the X, Miles. Peter the X. Okay. I guess the other X. (laughs) But yeah, so I just felt like I was ready to get to the confrontation and it took so long to get there. Agreed. 100%. If we can jump in the beginning a little bit. Mm -hmm. What the beginning to me. So this is what I've been listening to a lot of other book influencers talk about with this book is that so you have you follow Daphne and her perspective. She broke up with her fiance. We we can get into that story in a second, but she moves in with Miles and Miles is this depressed pot smoking 
like a scruffy, chaotic schlub. Um, <laughs> I guess yeah. people people are upset because it's not a like if you took the book that we both love, which is a fate, uh, fate inked in blood, where the first scene of, yeah. that you see of the love interest who's coming out from this water and he's glistening and it's a very Fabio moment or whatever. This is this is not it, right? No, but I liked that. People don't. I I was deterred from it at first. Yeah, I mean, but at the same time, like they're bo- they've both been dumped. And if he had not been sad or upset about it, wouldn't that have been a bit of a red flag? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But you yeah, I, you start out the book with two people that are just getting out of very serious relationships. Yeah, they're in the lows of lows right now. She yeah. thought she found her forever. And he, who is not a relationship guy, was in his first real relationship. And I think the Emily Henry, the author, navigated this well because it could have so easily just been a rebound moment, right? Yeah. Like you, yeah. And it wasn't. They actually fell for each other which was cute so what so how does Daphne and Miles get entangled do you want to talk yeah. about that well I think we talked a little bit about it so Daphne is engaged to Peter and Peter's best friend Petra who is a very attractive blonde woman who he swore up and down they were just friends they go on the bachelor party and stuff happens between the two come back and immediately dumps Daphne. Yikes. Yikes. And then gives Daphne one week to move out of their house. So cringy. That was so awful to read. And the miscommunications of that scene. Awful. So Daphne ends up moving in with Petra's ex, Miles. Yeah. Because she was she was dating somebody else too. Oh my god. Yeah. Bananas. So I part of Daphne's, I think, character arc is that she felt that she was absorbed in Peter's life, right? Yeah. That she didn't have her that, that's a common thing for her is to be absorbed into other people's circles. Yeah. And it starts with this relationship because when the breakup happens, she doesn't have the house anymore because it was underneath his name Mm -hmm. she had taken up a position as a librarian in this town waning bay or something like that she didn't know anybody all of her friends were his friends when they broke up it was like she lost her entire self if you will right yeah not just that but even her college friend that one that one stung for me because her college friend had a partner and they were basically couples friends. Sadie is her college friend. Yes, and that's Sadie right. is that's dating right. Connor. And Connor was basically best friends with Peter. And so it was like Peter got the friends in the breakup. Yep. And it, yeah. I think that was hard for me to read because it felt like Sadie was her only bring in to the group. And there was yep. no true friendship or follow up with that. Just very heartbreaking. She had bought all of the furniture for the house and her wedding dress, which comes in a scene later, which was interesting. She puts all of this shit in this apartment, Miles's apartment, and just closes it behind, you know, this, I guess, like in a, a closet. Yeah. Like a hall closet. Yeah. Like thought of. It's like, how can you pack up your whole life? I think that there's just some alliteration in that whole meaning, you know, like that she can do that so easily so that she can physically pack up and emotionally like pack up her whole life in just this apartment. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was just very sad. It was very heartbreaking, especially for a character who's used to doing that. Like her childhood was because her mom moved around for her job, so she would have to pick up and move everything from place to place. And so she was used to having to either make new friends or be that lone wolf who was on the periphery of friend groups. Yeah, which is a sad place to be. Yeah, just sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you have Miles, who I thought, so here's the thing. I thought, and maybe I missed this with Emily Henry's writing. I was either reading too fast or I didn't pick up on it, or I just built it in my head. I thought he owned the winery 
that he works at. Is that? No, he does not own it. He does not own it. I mean, that was not what I got. He's just the buyer for it. So he goes out and buys like all the groceries and supplies all of the produce and meat for the winery. Yeah, but there was like some people like her. She ends up getting a friend at the library, Ashley. But she thinks that the he's like a bartender, drug dealer. But yeah, yet he's but my and he does odd jobs, right? So he just yeah. seems like a total. Uh, not what did Peter do? Was he? He's not a doctor. What did he do? He did something established. Yeah, if you let's just say, I don't even remember what Peter did, but it was something established and boring. It could be finance. Who knows? one of those things but i think throughout the story with miles his whole character arc is that he does something that he loves he enjoys brings him so close to the community and the town and he supports other local businesses and he does really well at the winery and he does all these things that you change the lens of him just being like a bartender into actually like doing something really yeah. amazing and well, fun and, that, and awesome. And because our first lens of him is through basically Daphne's view from Peter explaining who he is. Because Peter right. seemed to have been jealous that Miles was with Petra. Or yeah. if not jealous, didn't think that he was good enough for Petra. So he had this skewed view of Miles as what you said as a stoner and somebody who can't keep a job and he doesn't talk to his family and all these negative things but when Daphne starts to get to know Miles you realize all of the wonderful things about him that you just said yes yeah Yeah. which I really appreciate and I liked that whole journey as well yeah I think Emily Henry did a great job taking us on the ride to get to know Miles and kind of falling in love with him So I can understand why people hated him in the beginning. Because like you said, you want to fall in love with the handsome guy who's going to be sweet and pick her up. But when he's super sad and smoking pot in his room all day, it's not very attractive. And that sucks too. Just having that conversation. Men are just as raw as women, right? Yeah. Men have feelings too, y'all. Yeah. And it doesn't make him any less emasculated. There's So one of the features of... Miles is his whole beard situation in this book. So he mm. apparently, what did you think about this beard situation? <laughs> I always forgot about it. Like to me, it was like a little bit of scruff, but then she would describe it as it being more than scruff. And to me, that just reads like stinky fisherman vibes. And I wasn't on board with it because my husband has facial hair. And when it's unruly, It like really grinds my gears to a complete halt. Well, so when this book was first released, the cover was announced, I think six months before it was actually published or maybe even more than that. The picture of both of them, the guy is sitting there at some sort of- Oh, you don't see his beard, do you? You don't see his beard, but what do you see on his feet? Yellow Crocs. (laughs) Do you remember his Crocs collection? Yeah. But that's very I work in service vibes, right? Like, it is totally I work in service vibes. If you know those vibes, be, but if you're, <laughs> if, if you're like, I didn't even guy, notice that. And she just looks really cool. I just always on the cover. She looks librarian chic. Yeah, and Daphne to me, she was Daphne? talked about as wearing, oh, yes, with all the button ups and the, yes. Yeah. Oh. And she just always seemed lost to me. Her whole journey is that, so she's living with Miles right now. She's working as a librarian. She and wants jo- to move She's back. at a job that she loves yes. as a children's librarian at this library in this small town. Yeah. And... But she wants to move closer to her mom, right? Well, I, she doesn't. She doesn't. She's looking at new jobs and she's looking specifically in Richmond to be closer to her mom. If she's going to move, that's where she would like to be. But I think she's kind of thinking, like, I need to get the hell out of Dodge. Because it is it is a small town. She doesn't want to run into Peter. Petra and Peter. And she doesn't have any friends. And yeah. Whatever. So there's really nothing but, keeping her in town at the moment. The readathon. So that's the only thing yeah. that's keeping her. So she put herself on this timeline because she has this big fundraiser that she's doing with the library. Have you ever done a readathon? I've never done a readathon. Oh my god, they were that's why I got into reading. Um, really? 
Mine was school. because I was a lonely girl. <laughs> <laughs> So I read my classics in middle school. I read Jane Eyre and I read <laughs> Pride and Prejudice. And then when I was bored with that, I would read R.L. Stein's Fear Street because Goosebumps was too immature. <laughs> love you. I love you. <laughs> in elementary school, and it was fourth and fifth graders, I think, you would come to school in your pajamas. You would get blankets from home. And then you'd put the desks together and you'd build like a blanket fort. Okay. I do remember doing stuff like that, but like not outside of my school at a library. Oh yeah. No, I haven't done that. No. And then you would just, okay, you I read thought that day. Yeah. Oh, well that I loved. Yeah. 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 Those were the, I would bring eight books with me thinking, oh, I would, this would hopefully last me the whole day and I'd read like two. <laughs> Oh, two is quite a feat. You go, girl. Well, you go, baby. Mine was, you would think mine was uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog and um, those old tiny books with the portrait, like the, they had different eras. Oh, gosh. Um, American Girl? It was like American Girl, but it wasn't American Girl. It Okay. I, need to, I, need to I definitely you. read all of Molly's American Girl books. Uh, the Dear America books? No, I have no idea what these are, LA. You know what? Can I be honest with you? I have uh -huh. no no idea what they are either. See, they have the little picture she and they're looks all so fucking sad. That's yeah, this full. is awful. She hates her life. The winter of red snow. Holy moly, she got her period in the winter time. That's what that book's about. Oh, it's during no, it's during the Revolutionary War. <laughs> she can still be getting her period, LA. This one just looks sad. <laughs> they all are a light in the storm. Ooh. It's a very depressed child, they I feel like. So sad. These were my, <laughs> these Dear America they, books, they oh were my, my God, absolute. Even the cover on the box. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, sorry. Thank you for going down that memory lane with me. I'm so glad. I could go with you. You know, I kept these books thinking, surely my children will, will want to read these. <laughs> You're sad girl books. <laughs> now looking at that, I'm like, You're like probably... mm. yeah, it's questionable. I will yeah. give it as a choice. And they're deviled edges. I hate deviled edged books. There are pictures. There are more sad girls in the book. I love it. Oh my God. It's a diary. They're ju it's just a diary. This, why did I love these so much? Because it was like a day in the life. Okay, let me and read those you are kind of great. Entry. Okay, please. Mom, Mama got up before dawn mm. and started working like a whirlwind and did chores all day. She said as long as she keeps busy, she won't think about Willis, Uncle Isaac, and Aunt Esperanza. <laughs> I started to mention Uncle Henry and Goliad <laughs> and Aunt Nancy and San Felipe with five children, but decided to leave well enough alone. Papa's fever broke this evening. He will not lose his leg. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> was pa was Papa in the Battle of the Alamo? And also the accent that you picked up while you read that diary you entry. Are... Top fucking notch. You're welcome. <laughs> are you um... LA? Are you are you a narrator? <laughs> no, but you know who is Daphne in this book. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny i'm so glad you circled back to funny story because we should get back on topic uh, you're welcome okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so what is keeping her in town is the readathon that is the only reason she is there and it's basically also because she wants to do it it's like her big moment and if she's going to apply for other jobs it's kind of a huge resume build for her. It's Truth. a big deal. And she cares about the people that are coming into the to library because she can relate with them. What you were saying earlier about her absentee dad and single mother, she would go to the library all the time. Yeah. It's... And well, and, and not just that, but she's building bonds with the people who yeah. are coming to the library. She reads stories out loud every Saturday to the kids. She knows a lot of the kids and their caretakers. She runs different book clubs with the teens. And she has one teen who she recommends books to all the time. And she's trying to rope her into coming into the fantasy book club. So she knows these kids. 
and she loves them. And I think that's what is starting to ground her. Like she's unintentionally planting roots. Very well said. Yep. And she finds her first friend too at the library. Ashley. Yeah. She's a divorcee and is blunt and not like the warmest person in the world, but also like very much a colleague. Do you know who do you know who I envisioned the entire time? Who? Do you know the costume designer from The Incredibles? Yeah. 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 I that's who I thought of for Ashley the <laughs> entire time. <laughs> that's such a downgrade for Ashley. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. I mean, I think that's who Ashley will become, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No, but I couldn't not picture Edna her. Is her name, right? Edna. Yeah. Yeah. Edna's an icon, though. So. I think Ashley would be pleased with that. I thought so. So they've been working together for a while. They've always yeah. they've been colleagues, not friends, but it eventually they do end up starting yeah, to have so a friendship. Yeah, so Ashley, nobody can go out with her. And so our girl Daphne is like, hey, I, I, I'll go out with you. Let's let's go have a girls' night. And which catches Ashley really off guard because she's like, we're just work friends. She's just finally like, fuck it. Yeah, let's go do it. Let's do it. And so Daphne, her only place that she knows to go is to go to a winery. Winery. Right? Yeah. Winery. Yeah. 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 And Ashley says something to Daphne like, oh, well, is this the one that has the The hot drug dealer? Yeah. The hot drug dealer. And Daphne says, well, I don't know what you're talking about. They end up going and the hot drug dealer is Miles. Miles. And before, before this. Daphne and Miles both got invites to Peter and Petra's wedding. What were your feelings about that? Like me, I was like, what the fuck? The gall. The gall. I love, I loved it. I just, I thought it was fantastic that Emily Henry wrote this and did this. I cannot believe I cannot believe that they did that, but what came out of that was just amazing. I love, I loved that it happened. What did you think of it? I just felt like, to me personally, I was just like, no way, no way that this would happen, right? Oh no! But then when, no. but then when she she described it, when Emily Henry described it as they're basically two people who can't be hated, and yep. I was like, oh, I kind of get that. I kind of understand that. And then Daphne and Miles have that one like get together night where they finally are getting to know each other as friends. And they meet, that's when they meet Gil at that bar, whatever. And Daphne's like, oh, wow, this guy can actually like talk to people and really get to know people. And that's when she starts really liking Miles and how he interacts with the world, basically, because she can't do that. She has a really hard time connecting. And then it was at the end of that night that they both drunkenly accept to go to the wedding classic yeah classic. and then and then peter calls daphne yep what the fuck okay and then tells her basically you don't have to come then why send the invite peter i think because i think it was petra's idea because i don't think peter could give a rat's ass about being liked i think it's petra yeah yeah i could see that and i think peter's just following anything that Petra does at this point because he's made this decision he's I can't because I think he's a person that commits yeah Uh, I made this choice so now I have to do it yeah yeah that's what that's what I thought but it was very when Peter called her I was like all right this is where it I think it was a tell I think it was very obvious that we knew where the storyline was gonna go yeah they got engaged so fast they're getting married so fast because they've been together for like just three months They broke up with their partners, got together for just three months, and now they're engaged already. Embarrassing for Peter to send out to his whole family two wedding invites, and he's still not getting married. (laughs) I mean. What's wrong with you, dude? What is up? What's up, Peter? Oh, just awful. Yeah. So embarrassing for Peter. Awful, awful. Yeah. But when they – I loved how that all kind of, like, transpired because they do – I think the first time that they see 
see Peter out and about is Peter's going to the lavender fields to get cookies for Petra and Daphne and Miles are together. And because Daphne had lied to Peter and said that she's dating Miles and that's going to be mm-hmm. her plus one, but she, but he doesn't need the invite. <laughs> Yeah, that whole part of the conversation. I, I loved like, it. Oh. And how she had to piece together real quickly. I was like, oh, Daphne, you're so smart to think of. Miles doesn't need a plus one either. So he is my plus one. That's why I didn't put a plus one it. on mine. Because he also said he's coming. Loved it. And how Miles is all about it, too. He was like, yes, oh, yeah. Immediately on board. And I was like, yep. I love Miles. He is in yes. for the drama. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. Yeah. But then that's, is that their first kiss at the lavender? Yeah, it is. Because that's yeah. how the sexual part kind of happened. So they're, they're being friendly. They're in the situation together. Now they're, you have the fake dating trope, sort yeah. of. They start exploring. Yeah. Every, well, every Sunday he's decided that he's going to take, he's kind of found out that she doesn't really want to stay in Waning Bay. And that's his hometown. He, well, maybe not his hometown, but the town that he loves and wants to stay in. And yeah, he, he moved has, to it. He's originally from like Chicago or something. I thought, sure, I don't remember. Whatever. It, okay, he's not originally from there. He finds out that she's thinking about moving away, and he's like, "Well, I don't really think you know Waiting Bay very well. You know Peter's version. You don't know mine. So I'm going to take you out every Sunday, so you can." fall in love with this place just like me so cute perfect perfect little little dates that he's weaseled in there and she doesn't really realize it right exactly and they so on one of these dates lavender field see peter so Mm -hmm. she gives him this a very awkward awful like teeth hitting first kiss right yeah just like bangs into his face yeah but then it turns into something a little bit more and everybody was getting the it. tingles yes 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 so good and then nothing happens afterwards nothing happens <laughs> for so long i think this is emily henry's like slow burn but <laughs> it's such a slow burn and so frustrating because they live together so they see each other or know that the other's around all the time you have moments where her nipples are showing in her silk pajamas and you mm-hmm. have moments of bumping into each other and him without a shirt on and yeah all of those yeah hello yeah those are those were all fun but then i don't want to miss anything but i want to get into kind of the blah phase of the book a little bit well they, they have the whole prom party date which I thought was really fun and that was their first interaction with Petra and Peter together and then Miles well before that I was just thinking like his sister shows up randomly yeah Mm -hmm. and so now she's a part of the plot because we have to learn about Miles's family somehow and apparently this is how we're being forced to learn about it is his sister's moving in and I just found this plot line to be kind of like a little cuckoo and also cuckoo zany and also not very fulfilling why did she do this i mean it also keeps them from their sister sleeping on the couch so they can't like so they can't do anything each other. yeah i guess that's kind of like a, a, a big plot point is that they can't do anything when she's around yeah yeah because they start this is like the first time that he gets her off he like fingers her on the couch and then he gets immediately gets a phone call from his sister that she's at the airport right yeah no no yeah that she had already landed and that she was there There. i thought yeah 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 Yeah. and he had no idea so they have initiated the sex in the relationship like it's going to start happening and then his sister comes in and throws a wet blanket on everything and then after that there's like a whole bunch of sexual tension sexual tension can't really do much about it because your sister's here but also i don't want to ruin this friendship vibes which lasts for a really long time yeah but it it, i don't i don't know how i feel like i do like the sister but then it draws out it was too much it was i took away from them so you have the sister plot point happening you have Daphne's friendship with Ashley and that goes up and down because she misses out on hanging out with Ashley. They go to poker nights together. Then it's Ashley's birthday. She was supposed to go over there, paint her room. She Mm -hmm. forgot about it, it, but really she was having sex with Miles. We'll get, yeah, yeah, we'll get there in a second. And then you have another plot point, which is 
Daphne's dad comes into town. So you have that whole thing happening, right? Yeah. So like they come to town as well. And then you have at the very end of it, like how all of that affects just Daphne and Miles's relationship and then their relationship with their exes. Yeah. It's Ugh. so much happening, but I think it's because Emily Henry is trying to create, like, complete these circles of Julia is completing this circle of we're learning about Miles's family. And at the same time, Daphne is becoming friends with Julia, right? So yeah. here's Daphne planning more root roots because she doesn't have friends. And then the whole Ashley thing is like friends and community building. She's been sucked up in relationships and- yeah. Ashley had her realize that so yeah she has to go and apologize to Ashley and figure out I'm not going to be just a relationship girl I'm going to be an everybody girl the whole dad thing you know because she has to confront that trauma so much. I don't want to talk about it I don't want to talk about it it's important for the the third act breakup or whatever group, yeah but like, it's so stupid. The dad comes into town. He's married or getting married to Star. What's her name? Starfire? Starfire, which is like a Teen Titans character. <laughs> so stupid. Um, Yeah, the whole plot line with the dad, it, it like it was so long. Too much. It was too much. Didn't like I it. But it plays into the third act, and and I'm confused. So maybe you can add clarity because she, so they, but Peter shows up to the apartment and Daphne's there. And he tells Daphne, Peter tells Daphne that he and Petra have broken things off. Yeah. And is, I guess, seeking to see if Daphne would get back together with him, right? Well, yeah, because yeah. he's saying, I, this was a huge mistake. I shouldn't have done this. Right. Daphne, what you said earlier, what she said, no. And then he tells Daphne that Miles was five minutes after they broke up, was at the house helping Petra move out, correct? Yes. So then, and then Daphne confronts Miles later about where he, because he goes missing for like two days right after they had sex. Yeah. So they finally have sex on the beach, which by the way, I thought was like blah. Yeah. Meh. Mm -mm. Meh. And, and then all the um, sex scenes with them were blah, except for their first one on the couch. Yes. Yeah. Or the wedding dress one where, well, they didn't really have sex. Really he really just, sex. I mean, he they just had took sex on like the kitchen counter, but even that was just like, okay. Yeah. That's right. like, yeah. Anyway. So here's where I'm confused. So what we find out later is Miles actually went to where. Daphne's father was with Starfire so they leave without even saying goodbye they do an Irish goodbye to Daphne which she's really upset about and yeah. dad like moves on so what happens Miles goes and sees the dad gets stuck wherever they are has to spend the night and come back yeah and then, doesn't tell Daphne he did that yeah well he doesn't tell Daphne that he did that because he doesn't want Daphne to ha to live with the disappointment that her dad still said no that he was not coming back to say goodbye but Daphne thinks doesn't know any of that so Daphne thinks that he's just he's getting back together with Petra right yeah well because he also did help Petra move a couple of boxes right but he but she thinks and he's, he's also in well because Petra needed his car to move the boxes and so he also is in Petra's car because yeah. they switched cars. But what does Daphne think this whole time? She thinks that he's. She thinks this whole time that he's with Petra. I don't think so he she... under. I don't think he understood that that's what she thought. Okay. And she goes and kind of moves in with Ashley, right? right? They have a falling out. Yeah, they have a falling out, and she yeah she basically goes and moves in with Ashley, unofficially. Okay. Until the readathon. Done, and then he shows up for the readathon. Yeah, because everybody gets like whatever vomiting illness that her son had. So that brings in Miles and his whole crew to help with the readathon. That's it, right? They get back together and they have the you have the epilogue, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I how did what were your thoughts on the ending of the readathon stuff? To me, it was just very meh. 
It was anticlimactic. Yes, that is the word I was thinking, but couldn't, it wasn't popping into my head. Yes, very anticlimactic. Yep. I think there's something to be said about showing up for people that you care about. I think that's a huge thing. So I really liked that aspect, but I think that it could have been dramatized a little bit more. I just don't know how. I think she was trying to make it this moment that he was there and he showed up. It was the crowds partying and the man being there in the romance novels, you know, yeah. or the romance yeah. movies. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel that way reading it though. No, because I think we got too much of the readathon. Yeah. And I got bored. Same. It yeah. was too much readathon. I mean, the whole book was like building up to it. So we had to see it, I guess, but it was still too much readathon and not enough Miles and Daphne. Yes. We did not talk about the prom. We did like, we mentioned it for a second, but I didn't have any, did you, yeah, you go for it. I was totally like caught off guard when Peter and Petra walked in and then it was a bunch of like Petra's family there. Oh God. Crazy awful. Uh, What really threw me off and made me feel so mad and sick inside was when Petra came and hugged her. Like they were best friends. I hated that. I cringed so hard, but I like I, it felt so real. Can I tell you I've done that? <gasps> LA. Oh yeah. Cause I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I've totally done that. I have a very interesting past with my exes to where I, for whatever reason, have seen them frequently. I think it's just like the universe. The ones that lived in my town or yeah. just and a town as in freaking the metropolitan of Austin would still run into them. Yeah. And they'd be with their new girlfriend and I'm a hugger. And so I'd just be like, oh, hey, what's going on? And I'd give them a hug and they'd just be <laughs> like, Ugh. I know who you are. Get away from me. And I'd just be like, <laughs> yeah, but oh. this is different. Like it's he different. Broke up, he broke up with you to be with her. Now she's treating you like a best friend and you're supposedly dating her ex-boyfriend. And then she... I didn't Yeah, but I didn't take that as like uh, like a malice or like a no, very I like mean, whatever. It's like her trying to be friends with everybody. Like, I need you to like me, so I'm gonna be super nice. But then she calls her dowdy. Yeah. You know, and buttoned yeah. up. But I yeah. love Miles' reaction and how he said he's like, I've always been into children's librarians. Oh, and then uh, Peter talking down to him about how, oh, so have you ever had a, like a waiter? I, I don't even know what he says. I can't even remember. But like something so mean and cruel. It's just jealousy. Yeah. It's just, it's, and that's it's when jealousy. I was just like, all right, I'm waiting for you, Peter. I know you're in the, I know you're in the curtains and you're going to come popping out anytime knocking on that door. Hey, Daphne. Yikes. Yikes, yikes. Would you ever want to go to a prom at a senior? Hell yeah. That sounds like a blast. I wouldn't want to wear, I want to wear like a nice, she kept wearing her engagement dress. I wish she would have had a moment where she picked out something. Yeah. Especially if Peter's going to see her. I don't want him to see her in a dress that he's already seen her in. And that he bought. Yeah. Ew. No. No. Get your own dress, girl. Mm -hmm. Fast forwarding now to the epilogue. Mm -hmm. So she kept throughout Daphne's story, she would walk from the apartment to the library and she'd always pass that little green cottage that was like for sale. And it was supposed to be a hint at maybe seeing herself living here forever and building a house here. Okay. So in the epilogue, I was convinced that she would be living in that little green cottage, right? Uh No. Yeah. She's living in the yellow one a couple. (laughs) I I was okay with that though. It's because it's exactly the same house as yeah. the green one. Yeah. So she still did it. It's just not that house. No, I wanted it to be in that house. I think that's too cheesy. That's why. Because she made it more realistic. But like. When I found out how small the house was, I was thinking, you can't. That's just a starter home. You can't grow into that. You're going to spend all this money fixing this house. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Y'all are in your 30s. You're going to have kids soon if you want kids. <laughs> nope. They got their little cottage. And then her and Miles are just together, right? And the mom came into town and was meeting them. That was the big thing because like, they were throwing a I don't party. Think, this is a year yeah. and a half later. He wasn't meeting her. This is like the first time she was coming to the house. Sorry. She was meeting the other people of the town. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What I did like in the ending. So how she started the book was how... 
Peter would talk about how they met. Yeah. So that she would tell the story about losing her hat in the park or something. Yeah, and, and she said that she's always terrible at telling stories. She gave too many little details here and there, and she could tell people were getting like lost or wandering away from her story. But at the end, he starts. So he starts off and says, "Fun." Somebody asks, "Oh, I love a good meet cute. Let's hear it." He says, "Funny story," but he doesn't go on. Just watches me and waits. He knows how much I love to tell it. <sighs> so good. <sighs> so good. Okay. We didn't do this in the beginning. What's your star rating, girl? Star rating, four stars. Shame. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think I put four. Not five because it dragged and there are just too many plot lines. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I love the character development. I love the characters. I loved how flawed and lovable they were. I loved the scenarios that they were put in. Yeah, and just Emily Henry really knows how to pull heartstrings. She's yeah. so good at it. She's so good at putting you in that character's shoes. And I know you and I both really like dual POVs. And Emily Henry doesn't really doesn't write dual POVs. You're really only seeing through the female character's eyes, and I love it every time. Like I'm not I don't miss the male's POV or the love interest POV. Do you think, I'm assuming you're going to read her next one that she comes yeah. out with. I mean, Emily Henry will always be an insta buy for me. Do you think she's going, so now Allie Hazelwood recently did this. So she deviated from her kind of imprint, if you will, mm -hmm. where she was yeah. doing all this STEM based romances. And then she just did, we talked about it earlier this year with Bride, a werewolf vampire Omega verse type book. And then she right. also did a YA. So now Emily Henry has written YA before, and then she grew into adult. Usually at this time, the authors, when they do something that's, she, in my opinion, I don't think she's done it repetitively, but I think that she definitely knows how to do a romance, make it unique and make you feel a certain way. And, you know, you like it or you don't, whatever. Do you yeah. think if she took a left turn and did something different, do you think that she would either be successful in that? And then would you, would you read it? I would for sure read it. Hands down, I would read it. I don't, I guess I just don't see her doing that. Same. Because she, like, all of her books are set in Michigan or they're <laughs> from Michigan. <laughs> she can't, she can't leave the state, quite frankly. Yeah. So I don't, honestly, it's hard for me to, because she's like how Erin Hildebrand is for Nantucket. Yeah. Emily Henry is for Michigan. Isn't Abby Jimenez like Minnesota area too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would I be curious. Gonna, I would be curious, but I feel like we're going to keep getting these um these contemporary romances set in Michigan. Well, I guess Happy Place wasn't. We're in the Northeast, Montana yeah. and California. But the other one I I think she's gonna shift. You think she's going to shift? What do you think? I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly, but I think she's going to do something weird, like either magical realism or I think oh, she's just going to do. I could see magical realism. Yeah. I could see her I dabbling in that. Gonna... Yeah. Or she'll do like a companion novel type thing, like where she will have a couple from stories. I think she'll, she's going to do something different and weird. Um, I kind of like that she doesn't do companion. I like that all of her books are standalone. I think that's what makes them stand out so much for me. Same. Yeah. Cause it's what you're, you said it three times or now I'm going to say it for I the third time that she does complete circles and ties it up and, and that it's in one. Yeah. Yeah. I think something's going to change. Maybe she's going to do sci-fi. I don't fucking know. Maybe she'll do a horror. <laughs> I don't. I, honestly, I don't see it happening, but we'll see. Never say never, I guess. Never say never. All right. Well. Should we announce, next time? Should oh, we announce yeah. the next book? Yeah, do you want to yeah, do yeah, it? Okay. No, I want you to do it. I 100 because I want to sit back and enjoy this moment. <laughs> All right. So. We are going to take a little bit of a of a break from our modern romances and do some some fantasy for a bit. So we are going to do The Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. And I am so, you, so excited. 
everybody and their mom is talking about this book. It's a duology, actually. And the second one mm-hmm. is already out. But the Shepherd um, King duology. Yeah. So I remember when I told you that I have this book and I got it in a book box. Uh huh. I got it in a YA book box. Oh. I know. And it has a small YA tag, but I don't know if it means YA as in young adult or if it really means new adult. Mm. So I guess we'll figure, figure that out. Figure it out. Yeah. But I'm really excited. This book has been everywhere and fantasy readers have been telling me you have to read this book. It's so good. Yeah. And I like how it's not most fantasy romantasy books are hundreds and hundreds of pages or a hockey romance that's 700 pages <laughs> straight porn <laughs> um, yeah pretty much but this one is under 400 pages so it seems doable and and it's only a duology and barnes and noble is coming out with a special edition in october um hey. yeah so it's getting a lot of hype i'm so glad you picked this i'm so excited to read this i'm with you. so excited i've been it has been on my tbr for months god <laughs> We'll see what happens. Yeah. So next week we have our pain and pleasure wheel. And yes. then the week after that, we will be doing The Dark Window by Rachel Gillick. I love you. Okay. I love you too. All right. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs>